In this final video in the academic writing series, we will look at how to present data in graphs. There are two particular aspects we will look at. First, some of the useful phrases you can use to describe graphs. And second, how to avoid giving misleading information. We will be using three different graphs as examples. They all relate to a field you should have some interest in – university education. The first graph, figure 1, shows advancement rates to universities in the period 1970 to 2005. Using this graph, we will learn how to talk about trends in data over time. The second graph, figure 2, shows the number of universities and junior colleges in Japan. Using this graph, we will learn how to compare two sets of data. The third graph, figure 3, is a pie chart that shows the percentage of university students studying various major subjects. Using this pie chart, we will learn how to discuss percentages. First, let's learn some useful phrases for introducing a graph. Here are two basic patterns. The first pattern can often be used with the title of a graph. For example, Figure 1 shows advancement rates to university education in Japan, 1970 to 2005. Notice how this part is a noun phrase, not a grammatically complete sentence. The second pattern usually describes the key information or key point of the graph. For example, figure 2 shows that there were only two national junior colleges compared to 87 national universities in Japan in 2007. Notice how this part is a grammatically complete sentence. There are variations of these sentences. There are other verbs we could use instead of to show, which vary the meaning. How about these? The graph demonstrates, illustrates, proves, indicates, summarizes. Here is an example using the variations. The pie chart in figure 3 illustrates the percentages of university students by subject in 2007. When we want to describe trends in the data, we can use this pattern. For example, the percentage of men advancing to university in Japan increased sharply from 27.3% to 40.4% between 1970 and 1975. The percentage of women advancing to university remained stable at about 13% from 1975 to 1985. When you are discussing trends, be careful of the tenses. If you are describing a completed period in the past, use the past tense. For example, the percentage of people advancing to university dropped slightly between 1985 and 1990. But if you're describing a period that continues to the present day, use the present perfect. For example, the percentage of people advancing to university has increased steadily since the 1990s. Describing graphs often means comparing two sets of data. This can be done using comparatives. Look at these examples. There are more universities than junior colleges in Japan. The number of national universities, 87, is over 40 times greater than the number of national junior colleges. Both sentences use the word than to illustrate the comparison but one is a noun phrase, and the other uses an adjective. We can also give comparisons using conjunctions. For example, 580 out of 756 universities, 
77%, are private, but 398 out of 434 junior colleges, 92%, are private. Useful conjunctions or phrases to show contrast include but, however, by contrast, on the other hand, and whereas. Finally, let's practice describing the pie chart showing the percentage of students in Japan studying various major subjects. Here are some useful phrases you can use. 36.3% of students were studying social sciences in 2007. A combined total of 25.5% of students were studying science subjects, including medicine, dentistry, natural sciences, engineering and agriculture. In the second part of this video, we will look at how to avoid giving misleading information when you use or describe graphs and figures. There are two things to be careful of. First, the graph itself is misleading. And second, your explanation is misleading. First, let's look at how the visual appearance of a graph can be very deceptive. Let's use figure one as an example. We will concentrate on the period 1985 to 1995. Changing the layout of your graph can completely change the impression it gives. Look at this graph. The impression is of gradual change. But let's take exactly the same graph and make it much narrower. The impression now is of sharp fluctuations. Also, choosing which data is included in or omitted from your graph is important. In this example, you are only giving data every five years, 1985, 1990 and 1995. But what happens if you put in the data in the interim years? Let's do that now. The points for 1985, 1990 and 1995 are in exactly the same places, but the graphs look very different. Look closely at 1986 to 1987. In this year, one graph has male and overall advancement rates to university falling, while the other has it rising. When you are producing a graph, you need a balance between a graph that has enough detail to accurately portray the important features of the data, but which is easy to understand and does not overload the reader with unnecessary information. Second, let's look at examples of misleading statements about your graphs. Again, let's look at figure one. Take for example this statement. The percentage of males advancing to university in Japan increased from 27.3% to 51.3% between 1970 and 2005. This may be considered misleading because it could imply a continuous rise in numbers. Actually, the pattern is rise to 1975, fall to 1990, and then rise again to 2005. So this statement is not ideal. And remember, the trends would be even more complicated if we use data for every year in this graph. What would be a more accurate statement? How about this? The broad trend in male advancement rates to university in Japan is that from a starting point of 27.3% in 1970, they rose to about 40% in 1975, declined slightly to around 33% by 1990, and then rose again throughout the 1990s to over 51% in 2005. And finally, in this video on graphs, do not forget to mention where you got your data. The data for figure one is from two sources, the Japan Almanac 2006 
and a download file on the website of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, or MEXT. So, we can add a reference like this to our graph. Add a figure number and title to the graph, and we are done. During this video series, you have seen that doing academic writing properly is a lot of hard work. Sometimes all the rules and conventions may seem unnecessary, but in order to advance in the world of research and higher education, academic writing skills are absolutely essential. The sooner you start using academic style, the quicker you will get used to it. Good luck in your future studies and research careers.